Okay, I'm working on the text. So here we have uh, some text aligned to left, as you can see. All the text is on the left of each column, but not uh, on the right. It is aligned to left. If you want to make documents uh, for a leisure uh, purpose, some magazines for uh, not very serious matters, it is a good idea to to make the text as that uh, aligned to left because it is uh, it is well um, received by the readers. Magazines with um, text aligned to left. You want to if you want to make more serious documents for enterprise, it is a good idea to justify the text to make it. Um, touch the each side of the columns that, that gives a, a, a sense of seriousness of, uh, uh, okay so <coughs> here for a demonstration purpose we will make the text uh, justified so we are we're going to the paragraph um, panel before that, I must say something that you discovered maybe by yourself. On the bottom of the toolbox, you have two icons. The one on the right is to preview the document the much closer as possible as, as, as it will output. So when you have no item selected and you choose to display in preview mode, you see the document with um, no frames visible and look at that if you move the picture um okay i must uh, unlock the layer here if you move the picture and make it go a little bit outside of the page the part which is outside of the page is not visible anymore but in normal mode you see the objects which go which goes outside of the page you see the frames even if the objects are, no, are not selected you see the blue frame on, on the text here, the red frame on the, of the, on the picture, okay? So that's the difference. It is quite possible to work in InDesign while in preview mode. You may work in InDesign in preview mode, but most of the time you will work in InDesign in normal mode, especially when you're working on the text, and I, I will explain why later. <coughs> so, I lock, I lock the, the layer the pictures layer, once again, I'm working on the text. Okay, and I was um, about to to make appear the um, paragraph panel. So you go in the type menu, paragraph, and here you have the the options to make the text justified. So you have to select the the frame, not the text necessary. I mean, if you um, put the cursor, the text cursor inside of the text, you must, if you want the option to apply to all the text, you must make a control A, select all, in order for it to work. But don't do that, just select the frame with the black arrow and the options here will apply to all of the content of the frame. So you choose this option, which means the text is uh, touching the each side of the column, except the last line, the last line will, will be justify. Uh, will be aligned to left. Okay, I think it is quite obvious to understand what it does. And you have justified text. So not very good for magazines, but very good for um, company uh, documents. But you must understand the the, the cultural side of it. It is cultural. It is uh, there are habits different in Europe and the U.S. In the U.S., the magazines have the text justified like that, even if it is leisure magazines, um, not very serious matters. You you will have the the magazines <laughs> with justified text like that. In Europe, most magazines will show the text displayed as aligned to left. Okay. So when, when doing a, a publication, a document, you must take into account the habits of the country uh, in which you, you are working in. Um, even for the pictures, the way to, to post-process the, the pictures, the photos, 
will be different from one country to the other in Europe. I'm, I'm not talking about differences between Europe and US, but inside Europe, between, for example, Germany and France, you don't uh, post-process the photos the same for magazines. That's just aesthetics, just ways things that are done, habits. Okay, so here for demonstration purpose, I will uh, justify the text. Okay, maybe I will get rid of that, that background um, for now. I will go in the, in the swatches uh, panel, so where, where is it? Okay, if you don't see the swatches panels, it's uh, window color swatches. And while the text box is selected, I will apply to it the white color, which of course for a print is the paper color. Don't throw away the color we've, we've made earlier. We will use it later. But for now, I think it will be easier to, uh, to see what will happen if we don't have that background color. Paper is better for now. Okay, so we will, um, I will ask you to, to do your text frame the same size, um, same width as, uh, as me. So I selected the text frame and here, here, W width, you have the, the width. So type 130, hit the tab key. So it is applied to the frame. The tab key is a nice thing to know. It goes to the next uh, box, and uh, entry box, and it applies the value that you entered in the first box, okay? 150, for example, <coughs> and I hit the tab key, it is applied, okay? But let's make it 130. Okay, uh, I see, mm, do you have a gutter with a seven millimeter too? Control B, text frame options. Put two columns and seven mm, millimeter uh, gutter. So that's the, obvious, obviously the, the space between the columns. Okay, and you see what is happening here. In order to make the text uh, touch uh, each side of the column, in design, is um, is putting different uh, spaces uh, between the words. On some lines, you have large spaces between the words. On other lines, you have narrow spaces between the words. You see that? If you let in the in the, in the exercise here, you say so right now, don't uh, let uh, things go. Uh, you say if you don't understand thing, um, something, you, you just say now, huh? okay? So, the, the look of the text is not good, because in order to put the text uh, touching each side of the column, in design is only uh, acting uh, on the space between the words. So one good thing to do is to tell in design it can also uh, um, make varying the, 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 the space between the letters. Okay, and to do that you have to select uh, of course the box in order to say you're working on the box and you go in the paragraph panel. In the menu of the paragraph panel we will um, set better justification settings than they are now. Okay, you see the justification panel. In the paragraph uh, panel, in the menu, you, s you go to justification. <laughs> you must have the box selected behind in order to see what we will we'll do here. Okay, you check the preview. You see here, it is the, the way the space between the words can vary, um, but no um, space between the letters is set. So we will put here minus 10 and here 10, 
you hit the tap key in order for the value to be taken into account. And you can uh, check and uncheck the preview. So we'll see. You will see that normally the text is now better. Better looking. No more large spaces between some words. Okay, you, you are able to make the, the character to resize to its width. So type 90 and here 110. Okay, do you see that uh, when you check the preview, it is a better looking text than uh, before or no? Not really? Do you see a change in the text? <coughs> okay, so on purpose, I choose to have mm, very narrow columns with few words on each line because the, mm, it is really difficult for InDesign to make the text look good with such uh, constraints. Of course, if, if I have wider columns, there's, there is not such problem of justification. But here, the columns are very narrow, so it is difficult for InDesign to make the text look good. And uh, now it, it looks uh, better with um, when I allow InDesign to vary uh, to vary the um, uh, the letter spacing and uh, the um, width of the letters. Okay, so this setting you may come any time you want, uh, any number of time you want. Uh, with this, you, you may ch choose to, to make different settings at any time. That's not a problem. So you will see the process we are going through now. It's little things taken separately. That doesn't mean, mean anything, uh, not much. But all these little things we will do, in the end, will uh, produce a nice professional text, professional looking text. So uh, this first step, justification, is important. But there are other things we will do. OK, next thing. Next setting to make the text uh, look better. Do you see the hyphenation? That's it. The word splitting called hyphenation. You see uh, at the end of some lines, the, the dot. OK, thanks. You see some comma at the end of some lines. OK. All of these, uh, we will make them just go a little bit offside of the columns and it will make the text look better. So with the box selected, you go in window, type and tables, and you choose here the story panel. Window, type and tables, story. Don't take the... Okay, no problem. Not the same name in English, so I don't mention it. OK, and you uh, just check um, the box on this very complicated panel. And you see what's happening. Commas, dots, hyphenation goes outside of the columns. It is better looking. So it's a little thing, uh, a little ridiculous, but not so. If you add that little thing to other settings we will do, finally, we will have a nice looking text professional text quite different from what you get from Microsoft Word which is a nice software by the way most people can't use it they didn't study enough how to use Microsoft Word but, but the, the people who studied how to use correctly Microsoft Word I must say it is possible to make very nice thing what's the difference between Word and InDesign Word doesn't produce good typo typography, not as good as the, the one you, you will get from InDesign. 
Just a difference. Mainly. You will be able to be much more creative in InDesign, put the pictures and, and the text uh, the way you want, it will work. Most magazines you find um, are made with InDesign. Okay? More than 99% of the magazines are made with InDesign. So if you are asking yourself what can be done with InDesign, just take any magazines and uh, you know. You'll know what can be done with InDesign. Of course, if, you, if, if next year you will be doing 3D or uh, video games, obvious, obviously you will not become an InDesign professional. That's not the problem. The purpose of this course is to, uh, to make you able to, to, to write, uh, to, to produce nice documents. But we will not ask you uh, to, to, um, to produce magazines, of course. Most of you will go in 3D uh, and uh, video games industries, I'm sure. Raise your hand, the one which will not go, with, who, does not want, um, who do not want to make video games or 3D. Raise your hand, too. Mm, OK. Uh, about 20% uh, of the students, OK. So for you, maybe InDesign will be more, more useful than uh, for the one who will uh, go in the 3D and video game industry. OK, we continue. So I will um, make appear the character uh, palette type character. Which is uh, another palette to, um, to set the text in the document, of course. You still have the text box selected. You have um, to choose the type, the font you will be using in the menu here. OK, if you see a double T, it is a, um, not very good quality type. It's called true type, <coughs> but it works. If you see a O, it is high end uh, type, really good quality, it's open type. Both type, uh, both um, true type and open type works well. No problem for you being beginners in InDesign. Don't worry about it. Okay. When you go through the menu, if you want the type to be applied to the selected box behind, you you push the you hit the Alt key on the keyboard, and the type is applied. Okay. That's one way to choose the type you want to, to use in your document. Of course, do not do things like this. That kind of type is good for titles, for, uh, but, but not, not for, um, for the body. For, uh, for the body, uh, the, the main text in a document, you call it the body, the body text. Not, not for the, the text uh, of, uh, you, under, you understand. Some types are good for titles, of course, but not for the uh, long texts. OK, beware of another thing. I will, I will uh, select the type tool and type uh, a word in French here. OK. And uh, some type will not have uh, the, um, the special character like this, like this one. OK, I select the, the box with the the black arrow, I will um, go through the type uh, menu. OK. Do you find some types uh, who don't have these uh, special characters? They are only meant to, to be applied to English uh, text. OK, I don't find them now. OK. 
Okay, here. Okay, you have a, a character appearing now in pink, uh, pink uh, underlined, which is a way for InDesign to tell you that uh, this uh, letter, this character is missing from the font uh, you've chosen to apply. So that's one thing uh, to take into account if you're re writing so, uh, in French. Not all of the fonts will uh, be uh, usable. Okay. Okay, which are the best font to use? You don't do that, you just watch. I will go on the internet and type some uh, foreign language. Okay, this is a, a good website which shows 100 fonts. And if you choose to use uh, these fonts, uh, it's quite certain uh, that your document uh, is okay. It, these are fonts with uh, good quality fonts. Some are for titles only, some are for body text. Okay, the, the website doesn't offer you the opportunity to download the font. It just shows the name of the font and some story about the font. But at least uh, you have the, the name of the font and uh, from that you can go to um, another website which offers the, the opportunity to download the font. You install it on the computer and maybe it's already installed on the computer. Just check before uh, trying to add it to the font folder of the computer, of course. Okay. Question? Okay. Here, for the text, we will choose to use Adobe Garamond Pro, which mu must be installed on the computer. It comes with the Creative Cloud. So I'm sure every, everyone on each computer, you find, you find it. Choose regular. Okay. So, <coughs> this is called serif font because it is this small fit on the letters. Okay. You may also choose a non serif font, sans serif, like Helvetica. Not italic. You, do, you don't have these little feet on the letters. But here, um, okay, these are the, the two uh, main type of, uh, of, of fonts with serif and sans serif. Okay, choose Adobe Garamond regular. So we, we will be synced for the, uh, the exercise, it's re it will be better, but of course, for your own uh, documents, you, you choose what you want, whatever font you want. Okay, so you have the size of, of the font here, in points, okay. Try to choose 14, for example. And this is the space between the lines, which is 120% of the size of the font. So this value here is 120% of this value here, always. But you may choose to go far away from that value and make most, more space between the lines. <coughs> it depends on uh, what kind of document you're making. The more space you put in a document, the more high-end it appears. The less space you put in a document, more you fill the document with pictures and text all over the page, it is lower, um, it is for, a uh, how can I say, popular, bad game. Okay. Hmm? Cheap, that's it. If you want uh, your document to look cheap, you put a lot of pictures on, on the pages, a lot of text, no white spaces, 
It, it looks cheap. cheap. If you want to, to make it uh, more high-end, more, uh, you put sp more uh, space on the page, uh, blank space, uh, not much uh, pictures. Okay, why anyone would want to make a document look cheap? Because you want to, to make the people understand you are the cheaper, uh, you buy, you s you're selling uh, cheap products and it's uh, not uh, costly, uh, you see? You are the best on the market for the lower price. So that's why you want to, um, sometimes you want to choose to make documents look uh, cheap. Okay. So put that value. So we, we will be in sync. 14 and 18 as a space between the lines. Okay, we will make a title now because I want to explain to you s something. Uh, it will be better on the title. So you choose the text uh, tool and you draw a text frame just about uh, this size on the page. And you, you type in any word, but small, just one word. Just one word. So that will be a title. Okay. So with the black ar arrow, you double click on the lower right handle and the box will um, come closer to the text. That's one way to do it. I co could have done it with uh, just a black arrow here and manually putting the the handle closer to the text. <coughs> okay, but you, you could also double click. Okay, don't be um, worried with such such things here. Um, if you have letters which go under the line, okay, and you double click on the handle, it seems that the letter is outside of the box. It's not a problem at all. It will work, even if some letters are outside the world, the, the, the box. Okay. So, we will make it uh, larger by using the free transform tool. I told you earlier that you don't have to use that on the text boxes, unless when you working on the corner handle, you use the shift key at the same time in, in order to keep the proportion of the text. It is not acceptable to, to change the proportion of the letters, of the characters. It, it is disrespectful for the guy who draw the, the letters. Technically, it is quite possible to do it, but don't do it. Okay. Okay, the text box uh, is selected and in the character panel, I will choose optical instead of metrics. And just look at what happens to the text uh, when you do that. You see, some letters, some characters are moving when you choose optical instead of metrics. This is a setting uh, which matters uh, with the space between each couple of letters. Each, let each couple of letters is analyzed uh, is, uh, by InDesign and it puts, when you, when you choose optical, <coughs> it, it puts the, the right um, space between uh, these two letters, uh, these two ones, these two ones, okay? So it's a really co complicated, um, really uh, complex um, computation. And the purpose is to make the world appear um, without holes in it. it is, I, I, the world appears more as a block with no holes. 
So that work is normally done by the, gra the graphist, the, the, the guy uh, who, who makes the titles, manually. But InDesign does it for you. It computes it for you. And since it is a computation, one thing can be done which was impossible before in design. You may be able to select a whole text and apply the optical. And it, it changes the space between each letter, each couple of letter is uh, the, the, the space is really the the one which is the best for the looking of the, the text, okay? Okay, so if you're doing a poster, you may manually set the space between each letter, or um, you may uh, ask InDesign to do it for you. And w when you're doing long documents with lots of text, of course, you will never do it manually, or, but you may ask in design to do it for you. <coughs> okay, don't do that. I'll just show you some websites, some uh, pictures. The things I, I'm talking uh, about here are, are no secrets. Everybody in the print industry knows um, how it works. Okay. Okay, I just typed uh, here in Google these uh, French uh, uh, words. And these are some pictures which come out. So, here is on the left the text without the justification settings without the optical setting, instead it's metric, and on the right you have the justification settings and the optical, and you may, uh, you may find that the text on the right is more uh, lo professionally looking than the one on the, on the left. Okay. Here they have uh, draw some lines to show uh, what they call lézard, holes in the text. And after the settings, it is much better, the same text. So that's what uh, we've done. We have set the typographic gray. It means when you looking at the text at a certain distance, you may have the feeling that the, the text is without holes, uh, um, a, a, a solid gray, okay? Okay, I keep the, the title for letter, just there, or you may put it outside the page, it's not a problem. That's the meaning of that uh, space here, is to put elements which are, are not used on the page right now. I've prepared them for use later. Remember that <coughs> if you are in preview mode, you are not able to see anything on the side of the page, only in normal mode, you will be able to manipulate the things on the side of the page. 